Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in my tips and strategies. Uh, I believe this is number 20, so I've really enjoyed making these videos. Um, I'd like to be able to kind of go back myself and just watch, uh, just to kind of keep re-emphasizing the things that I do well in the game, the things I don't do well in the game, um, and just kind of look at mistakes I make, mistakes that other people make. It just helps me get better. So uh, if you're seeing this, thanks so much for watching uh, my videos. You know, I've, I've put up 20 of these. I don't know how many more I'll end up doing because um, I don't know how many tips and uh, strategies I can kind of give. But in this game, um, just to kind of get you up to speed. So uh, the plane had basically come straight down through here and I had landed over on the uh, west side of Los Leones and I had worked my way down uh, then worked my way north and I ended up getting uh, an SKS and an M4 I believe and um, I had positioned myself and I'm gonna go ahead and set it two times here um, I had positioned myself up on top of this ledge and I was trying to uh, catch people who would be coming in from the south but I knew there weren't gonna be a lot of people coming from the south uh, at this point, but I could hear a lot of gunfire to uh, uh, my left over here coming out of Pecado. Uh, so there was a lot of gunfire that was taking place there earlier. So uh, we're down to 22 people at this point. So as this circle is coming in, uh, you'll see where the next one is. And all of a sudden, there is a plane that goes over. Now, when the plane goes over, it actually drops a crate very close to me. Here comes the plane. And when the crate comes... Now, typically, I never go for crates unless it is what I think is advantageous for me. And by advantageous, I mean I can get to it and I'm not basically going to die uh, on the way. Because, uh, I'm, you know, cr when crates hit, basically a lot of people try to converge on it. And so, I just so many times, I end up getting kind of the raw deal out of it. So, I tried not to go for crates, just typically. Um, but I did this time because you can kind of see that there was no one really close to me. I got Goshen coming up behind me. I got GT over here. And we're going to kind of look at a mistake um, that GT ends up making. And... This is kind of in relation to a mistake that you would make involving a crate. Okay, so uh, when I get to the crate, um, there w it, it had uh, obviously the level 3 helmet, level 3 backpack. I think I had a level 3 backpack, uh, but it had the MK um, sniper rifle. So I swap out the SKS for the MK. Now, you can see where GT is right now. So he's currently looking up this way. But he knows that a crate just came over here. Now, you can see where the circle uh, basically just was, and you can see where the new circle is. So what this guy ends up doing is he decides that he wants to go ahead and move over and come and get this crate. Problem is, he's, he's kind of reacting too late. And the thing that he should kind of recognize you know, and I mean, you should you should as well. Is if a, if a crate's coming down and you're basically in between where the circle, um, the, the new circle is, and where the crate is, that means that there's a good chance that there are going to be people who are coming up from this direction, which means you are not going to be the only person who is seeing this crate. So he ends up hopping out here. He moves over, and he starts to come over. And he sees me at the last second. And guys, you know, this is why I say it's a mistake. If I'm coming from the direction of the crate, there's a good chance I was there. This guy is standing out in the open. I mean, he's not hes not running for cover. Like, if this were me, and all of a sudden I'm seeing someone sort of run behind this tree, and I know where I'm at with no cover, uh, I'm taking off running. I am getting back... Uh, and so I finally get that guy down and, you know, I'm gone. Like, I'm at least turning around and I'm going to get into a fight with the guy, but I'm going to do it at least with having some cover with me. So I run up, I raid this guy, get him down real quick. And now while this is going on, we've got Goshen in the back. Now he hears all this 
And he doesn't quite see me from the angle that he just was. Otherwise, he would have taken some shots on me. But he ends up making what I think is a really good decision. And so a lot of times, you know, I kind of point out mistakes in games, you know, things not to do. Um, this guy actually makes a, a really good decision. And the decision he makes is he knows that there is a fight that just took place right over here. Plus, he knows because he would have been able to look at the kill feed, he would have been able to kind of see um, the weapon that I just used because he can hear the shots, all of a sudden the fight stops, he can look up into the kill feed. So this guy ends up um, kind of moving and giving me a wide berth. Now, I don't know he's there, but he's saying, okay, I don't care that I'm going to take damage from the blue zone. Uh, I don't care about that. The only thing I care about is kind of getting into a location that I think is going to be advantageous for me. So that's exactly what he does. Let's go ahead and set it to two times. So he runs all the way down here, um, takes damage from the blue zone, but it's just it's not enough yet, and he's he ends up healing up before he gets into the uh, safe zone, and then he takes even more damage. But he, you know he he settles down, heals up. Uh, he had just healed up a minute ago. Okay, so we'll get him to right here, and so he lays down and he's healing up now. He knows that I'm somewhere up in this area. What he doesn't know is that I'm actually moving over into his direction. He doesn't know this. And he just gets a little bit unlucky here because here he is trying to heal up. And you'll see me out of the corner there. Now, I don't see him. When I, when I top that ridge, I don't see that guy. So I'm kind of looking back. I'm trying to heal up myself, take some... Um, boost and this guy unfortunately doesn't get me down I'm about to sneeze so we'll see what happens if I do or not nope it's going away all right so okay so if I'm gonna say if you're ever in this kind of a situation the thing to kind of understand okay so I had taken just very little damage from that shot right there very little damage and so I take off running this way. Well, the thing is, I had just moved over to here. So when I get to right here and all of a sudden I'm taking shots, it was sort of fresh in my mind what that area looked like. So I know where that guy is and I know that he's at the bottom of the hill um, because that's where the shots came from. So instead of trying to heal up or anything, I knew that I wasn't on the verge of death or anything. So I rush back because I know I've got all the advantage in the world over this guy down here. And I basically get that guy down. Now, I don't raid this guy, but to be honest, I didn't really need anything from him. I had first aid kits, I had ammo, I had basically everything I needed. And on top of that, I just took some shots from Jay Saucier. <laughs> I love the name. Uh, anyway, Saucier over here, um, he had seen me, he was shooting at me with a car 98. And so I kind of take off running and to basically get away from that guy. Now we're down to 13 people at this point. Uh, he takes one more shot at me, I think. Okay, so yeah, he takes a shot right there, but it uh, doesn't hit me. I'm fine. So I go ahead and kind of move back up. And I'm looking for this guy, but he moves over to um, sort of the north. Uh, moves north, kind of gets out of my line of sight. So I never see this guy. I never take any shots at him. Um, and, okay, so now I make a decision. Now, if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know that I talk. Like, don't get into buildings. Don't get into buildings, uh, at the, especially at the end of the game. Uh, don't run down into basically a valley at the end of the game, etc., etc. Unless it's advantageous. Now, this is one of the few games I ever play uh, played where it sort of is advantageous. So I'm looking at my map. Now I, I realize there's 11 people left, so I got 10 people to deal with. So I look at where this next circle is and I realize like, okay, there's a really, really good chance that you know the next circle is, I mean, it's obviously not gonna be outside the, 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 this circle. So it's going to be on the inside here. Now what I know is this area right here is all flat. There's buildings right here. There's you know basically some um, uh, rocky terrain right here and right here. 
but there's a good chance that this next circle is actually going to encompass these buildings. If that's the case, I don't want to be up on this ridge trying to run down and to get into here because I know how flat the area is. So I go ahead and make the decision, get into the buildings and get into the buildings right now. That way I don't have to kind of deal with it and I'll be able to take shots at anyone who is coming from the north here uh, up on the ridge um, having to come down it'll help me out. Now, what I'm unaware of is that CM Heinley is over here and he had just gone to this crate over there. He had gotten a level three helmet, obviously, he picks up the AUG. Um, and so he's taken off running over here. Now, guys, when I say run down and get into these buildings, um, what building makes the most sense? Because guys, this is the building that everybody runs to. It's the biggest building, it's where people go, it's where they wanna be. Um, this is where they gravitate. So I know that if anyone's already in this little um, village here, or in these buildings, that probably someone is going to be in that back building. So that's not where I wanna go. I wanna get into these buildings right over here, especially this one because I'm gonna be able to look out and I'm gonna be able to see the ridge line. I'm gonna see anybody coming down, uh, running through. And I also don't think that anyone is gonna be in this building right at the moment. Now, I could hear CM running behind me over there. So I knew that someone was now in the, the, the buildings with me. I, I knew that. So, and my guess was he was exactly where he ended up going. All right, so we're gonna go over and we're gonna kinda of look at the situation as it unfolds over here. And it's not that these guys are making a mistake. The only guy that can really kind of say makes a mistake right over in this area uh, is probably this guy right here, Nick Sin. Um, he, he's not really running in the direction of the circle. Now, the circle is coming in at this point. I'm gonna set it down a little bit slow. He hears gunshots over here and he's running in the directions of the gunshots. Okay, well the problem with that is the circle is that way. <laughs> you need to go. These two guys up here, they had been fighting. Rashi ends up going down. There's a guy over here, Zalu Sauron. He's another guy who was over in this area, but this guy was sort of smart enough to realize, like, okay, I gotta go, because it's gonna, I'm gonna take too much damage from the blue zone. Rashi and Nixon, <laughs> they try to heal up. Nixon is taking shots now at Zalu. Doesn't get him down, but he's, like, wasting time shooting at him. And Rashi runs over, tries to get healed up. I, you know, these two end up getting into a fight, but it's pretty irrelevant because they both would have died to the blue zone anyway. I, it just, I, you know, it is what it is. So, we're <coughs> excuse me, we're now down to six people. And this is another guy who was just late to the uh, blue zone. He does a good job, actually. He heals up. You can see what his health is. He heals up right there. But unfortunately for him, Supreme is right over here, sees him, and takes him down. So now we're down to five people. Now, this is sort of one of the last things I'm going to show in kind of relation to other players. Um, sort of not, not making the best decision. Um, this guy is coming from the mountains right next to uh, El Pozo over here, which isn't a bad place to be. It's where a lot of players like to go to kind of take sniper shots at people. Now, he basically has three choices. Now, if he's up here, he sees where the circle is, there's really no good way to get over into the circle and have cover. Even if he gets to this building right here, it's not in the circle, so he's not gonna have cover for long. So he's got three choices. He can basically run straight down through here, not really take any fall damage. It's not the worst possible option. Um, he can go in the direction that he decides to go, which is trying to circumvent and come all the way over here, but you're going to take some fall damage that way. But his idea is he's trying to hug the blue line, uh, thinking that there's nobody over here, and he'll be able to come down and kind of come up over on this side, which not the worst idea. 
But I think probably the better option for him would have been to actually come down over in this direction. Now, the reason I say that is it is a wide open area, but there's a minute to go. If he can get down here without taking any fall damage, he knows that there's nobody right down here in this immediate area because it's all flat. He would have been looking down here. He would have seen that no one's here. So he could have rushed down, rushed over to this building, and then from here, um, he could have basically made a decision on where he wanted to go, whether it would be to the left, whether it would be straight, even if the circle... Uh, well, obviously the circle is not going to be in the buildings, but he could have run to this ridge over here. Uh, instead, he, he moves, and I think he just didn't see Zalu. You know, he might have picked a different direction if he didn't see this guy. Um, but he ends up going this way. Rushes down the hill, and he ends up getting taken out. Now, uh, we'll look at another decision here in a second. Do, 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 do. All right, so CM makes a really good decision right here. Now he had been in this back building, but he knows that the you know the circle is not going to be inside the building, so he needs to get up to here to get into the circle. But he's not content with staying just um, right on the outside. Even though if he would gotten basically right to here, he'd have some decent cover. Um, but he knows that he has the AUG, level 3 helmet, level 3 uh, vest. Um, he's got a lot of advantage to get into a fight. And so to utilize the AUG, you need to be sort of in close range to medium range. So he ends up taking off to get up to here. And I think that's a really good decision on his part. Um, because he knows that there's five people left. And if he can actually go ahead and, and get out of there... And Zalu just got black fog down. So that's a really good decision on his part um, because he's putting himself sort of in a good position to get into a fight. Now, what I'm doing at the moment is because I've got the MK, um, I, I also had a three scope uh, along with the eight scope. Um, I'm moving around and I'm trying to move into this building to come through here. And I want to pop out here. And I had seen you know, where the circle was going to be. So I was trying to pick a spot um, that was going to basically be into this building because I figured I would still be able to have cover. So that was my plan, and I ended up kind of changing my plan at the last second, and we'll get to that. And Zalu right there was actually taking shots at, uh, uh, I think, CM, maybe Supreme. I'm not really 100%. Um, it doesn't really matter because he goes down. Uh, he just sort of was in a bad spot down there at the bottom, and he ends up getting taken out. Now, Supreme uh, has worked his way all the way over to here. Yeah, I had to edit that. Uh, I just sneezed. Anyway, so Supreme right here had worked his way over, takes out Zalu. And this is where Heinle kind of makes a little bit of a mistake. He is using the AUG right now at that distance. Now, you can see the distance. Now, here's the thing, guys. He's got the car 98. If you're going to be at that distance, you don't want to use the AUG. I mean, you just don't want to use the AUG. He's got the three scope on it. Um, and this is where he makes the second mistake. I mean, he should have taken the shot originally with the, the car. But guys, you can see where his cover is, and he gives up his cover. And I, I can't quite figure out exactly what he was thinking here, because he knows that he hit Supreme. Um, but he didn't do a ton of damage. But look how far out this guy moved. Takes damage right there, doesn't heal up, moves back over, takes another hit. And gets taken down, you know, and he had been leaning into shots, but then he wasn't leaning right there. So I wasn't, I'm not really sure what he was doing. So instead of rushing into this building to get to cover, I end up seeing this um, car. Now, I don't like being in buildings, um, especially in a building like right over here. Uh, the problem is because I'm limited with sort of my view. Plus, it would make a ton of sense for anyone that is left to be able to look down here and think that I could be in this building. 
So once I see the car, I'm like, okay, great. I'll, I'll, I'll get here. I'll be able to kind of look through the car. And that's exactly what I was doing. Looking through the car, trying to line up a shot here. And unfortunately, um, you know, the guy, you know, unfortunately for me, um, he doesn't stop there. But what I decide to do is like, okay, this guy does not know where I'm at. Let's take my time. Let's get a good shot on this guy. Let's get a head shot. Let's wait for him to stop. And once he pauses here, I get a I get a headshot, and you can see how much damage I did. Now, if you've seen my video called "Stick and Move," um, I talk about how if you get into a fight with somebody and you don't get them down, move. You have to move. You can't stay in the same location. So the moment that I don't get the guy down, but I know that I hit him, I take off running. And I book it. And I'm going to set it back to two times here just so we can kind of wrap this video up. Um, so I end up getting over into a, a new area. I'm not where, you know, I just was. So the guy doesn't know exactly where I've gone. I throw a smoke grenade. And once I throw the smoke grenade, um, it's I, what I was trying to do was just kind of distract the guy more than anything. I had no intention of running to the smoke. So I'm looking for this guy again. I get down. I've got a little bit of a ridge there. He sees me, but he doesn't get any damage uh, on me. And he makes a really good move right here. Um, he sees where I'm at. So he's trying to get into an elevated spot to be able to see me right over here. The problem is, even at this angle, I'm still hidden. So he runs up the hill, sees where I'm at. Now, I chuck a couple grenades. Don't hit him. I mean, he knows where I'm at. Now, if you kind of note something here. Um, okay. Right, right here, I believe it's right here. So, I take damage again. It's not a lot. Um, so, I go ahead and kind of take some more painkillers. Um... And what I do is I actually swap out my uh, 8 scope and I put my red dot. Now here's the thing guys, if your head's up and you're basically in this final circle, um, you do not need to have a scope on your weapon anymore. To me, a scope is going to be more of a distraction because if I'm zoomed in, I can basically move and react a little bit slower. So I can react quicker to where somebody is going to be and where they're going to be if I've got the red dot. Plus I know that at this range, I, it's no longer long range. This is medium range. So I, I, I can use the red dot. So I want to use the MK because it's a much more powerful gun than my M4. So um, I go ahead and switch the red dot over. I'm looking for this guy. I see the flashes. And I try to line up a shot, and right there I get my first shot on the guy, and I do a ton of damage to him. So I know he's hurt again. I have to basically heal up again just to make sure I'm kind of ready. But I move down first. Or maybe I didn't heal up. I can't remember if I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, I healed up right there. Okay, so now I make my sort of my final decision here. Um... I move down into this valley because I also know that, you know, I'm now in the circle and now I know that this guy is not in the circle. Now, as great as the MK is, if I'm going to be in basically short range combat now, I want to switch over to the M4. Um, I, setting the MK to automatic fire, there's a lot of recoil to that gun at basically close range. So, if you know, if I set it to auto. So, if I switch back over to the M4, put the red dot back onto my M4, um, and I had attachments for it, so the recoil's a lot less, um, that makes, that, that's a better decision for me to make at this point. So, that's what I do. I switch back over to the M4. I chuck another grenade just to see if I can get the guy down. Uh, I end up hearing him. And I've got a little bit of cover there, plus I had actually knocked off the guy's helmet uh, there uh, with that final shot from the MK. So I'm able to get this guy down and game over, chicken dinner. 
And this guy, Supreme, he, he played a really, really good game. He was making really good decisions here at the end. Um, if we had to play this scenario ten times, I think it actually probably... It, I'd win five and he would win five. Um, because he played it well. He was thinking strategically where to position himself, etc., etc. Um, so, Supreme, you, you, this guy played a great sort of heads-up match here. I just end up coming uh, uh, out ahead. So, the thing to kind of take away from this game, guys, is... You know, just try to be really strategic in what it is and where you're positioning yourself, like getting into a building, whether to do it, whether not to do it. Um, and also just kind of be cognizant of when you get down to the final circle, you know, if you're using a gun that has a scope, swap out the scope. You, you don't need a scope basically at this point. Um, I don't like to use a four scope. Um, but I do like to use a three scope when those circles are getting smaller. But when it's heads up and it's this small, get the red dot. You know, if you like the holographic side, get the holographic side on it on your gun. Um, just try to think ahead, but don't kind of get caught using a scope when you really shouldn't be using a scope. So, alrighty, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. See you.